Hey there, CPO here, and it's time to uh, get these motor mounts onto the boom. So I've got these extensions here for the flight controller, or what we commonly call servo wires. And uh, they're long enough just to get me uh, where I need to be inside the booms and then to the PCB on the body of the hexacopter. I thought about maybe getting different lengths uh, to customize how long they are, but... In the end, I figured this uh, length was going to be just perfect for me. And uh, I can deal with a little bit of the excess. To get these through the boom, it's actually easier if you flatten them out uh, and uh, and just push the flight controller cable through first. And uh, oftentimes, you can get that to slip through. There's a little cross uh, screw that holds that plastic cap onto the boom uh, where it mounts to the to the frame. Uh, and sometimes you can just slide that under nice and easy, like that one went through. And then once you get that flight controller cable through, then you can push through the uh, the positive and negative battery wires. Not all of them go this easy, though, um, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit uh, later on uh, that you might have to kind of finagle it. But once you get these through, uh, they should push through. You might have to shake it a little bit or... Uh, or work at it, but uh, mostly able to get them through. I originally started with uh, like trying to use a string to pull them through, and it just got more complicated. It was just easier eventually, I found, to, uh, to just snake them through like this. Once you get those pulled through, then you're going to make sure that you get your motor mount uh, pushed onto the end of the boom. And remember, uh, in this orientation I'm doing, uh, it's upside down, right? So... Uh, make sure that you have your motor facing the right direction. So with the uh, the PCB port down, the motor should be facing up. And uh, that's kind of what it looks like. Now, we're going to deal with these screws. I'll show you that here on the next one. Uh, but eventually what we're going to want to do is get these fairly level. And uh, I thought about eyeballing these and getting them level, but what I decided to do is wait until I've got all of them done uh, and then leveling them all at once. So I'll be doing that in a later step. So here I am, uh, you know, adding in another one. These center ones uh, that don't pivot are super easy. I wish they were all this easy, but there's nothing to get in the way. So uh, they literally just shove right through um, with no, uh, no resistance at all. So that one uh, worked out really easy. So getting to the, uh, to the screws... We're going to use the smaller 8 millimeter screws on the, uh, the two screw holes closest to the body. And I'm not really tightening these down super tight, just enough to hold them on. And then we're going to put the motor mount on and uh, just clips into place, making sure that you've spread those wires uh, so they're not in the way of the, uh, the motor shaft. A little bit of thread lock, and these are the 10 millimeter uh, screws again. And... I'm using thread lock on the outermost because those are just tighten them down and be done with it. Um, I'm not using thread lock yet. I will later on uh, on those uh, two closest to the body. Uh, those are still 10 millimeters there, by the way. Uh, the reason I'm not using thread lock yet is I'm going to loosen them up and level the motors, and uh, I, I'm going to have to re thread lock them anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my wires in just to get them all uh, tidied up. But it, in the end, I don't know if I'm going to have to change directions on any of these yet. So I'm not going to strap them down any further than that. And uh, basically just uh, running through this whole thing. Again, make sure your red motor mount goes with your uh, red uh, booms. And then you can see here, sometimes I have to use a hex driver to kind of coax the wires out. Use whatever method works for you. Um, that's probably one of the more pain-in-the-butt parts of this uh, process, though. And then we're just going to basically uh, get all these done. When, you, when you're done with your thread lock, push it out of the way. Uh, otherwise, you'll get it all over yourself, trust me, or all over your parts. So here's kind of the controlled chaos right now. And I'm going to work on soldering these connections. So uh, grabbing my trusty flux pen to uh, just add some flux to the solder pillows that are already on the PCB. That was the very first step uh, that I did on this build. So I'm just going to get some of that flux on there, um, get everything flowing. And then I'm going to go through and just 
uh, as you can imagine, positive to positive and negative to negative for all these connections. In hindsight, I probably could have gone in and shortened up these connections to be a little bit tighter, uh, shorten the wires a little bit, but I don't mind them being a little extra long. I'm using these little, uh, I don't know what these things are, these, what are the forceps? I'm not sure, uh, but uh, they're medical scissors, whatever they are, uh, to hold the wire. Uh, works out great. I'm not locking them in, but I just wanted something really uh, tiny that I could get in there and hold while I solder. The uh, key here is to make sure that uh, you don't touch uh, any of the other parts, the plastic parts or any other wires while you're doing your soldering. Otherwise, uh, that doesn't work out very well. But uh, just take your time, get them in there, uh, let that solder melt all the way through from the top and push down uh, into your uh, solder, solder bed that's there before on the pad. And uh, hold it in place until it dries. Uh, don't uh, don't just pull off right away, otherwise you'll uh, end up with a cold joint there. Here's another look at how I uh, use that uh, those forceps to uh, go in there and hold that into place while I solder. Makes it easy. Um, I'm not really too uh, concerned with the direction of the wires or how I'm getting them. I'm just kind of folding them back on top of themselves and then uh, soldering them in place. So hopefully that'll work out in the end. All right, and there's what it looks like. Now, what I'm doing is uh, testing continuity between the positive connections and the negative connections. So going through all the positives. And I'm actually testing against the ESC because uh, I want to make sure that my connections are right and that I've got continuity. Uh, and then alternatively, um, I also am testing negative continuity, right? I'm checking the negative uh, terminals on the ESCs to make sure that I don't have anything cross-wired or uh, I don't somewhere have a negative and a positive connecting those two circuits, which I didn't. So uh, now I'm going through checking all the negative connections. Just want to make sure I did everything right. Now this is uh, going to be for my battery connection. This is a 12 gauge wire. I don't know how long I need this on the final build, but I need something so I can start doing some electronic setup and testing. So I'm just going to cut off a length and uh, and then I'm going to solder on a uh, uh, XT60 connector, which is what my battery uses. And just going to get these things uh, set up, prepared on both ends. Uh, just soldered on uh, or tend on one end to connect to the PCB and then of course uh, the other end is going to get the XT60. Alright, so uh, this is the XT60 part. Uh, just adding some solder to uh, the bullet end on that. Using my helping hands to get everything in place and uh, locked in. Adding in battery connectors uh, can be an intimidating uh, part of building if you're new to RC, but the more practice you get, and uh, again, like I mentioned in previous videos, if you get a good mechanical uh, lock-in before you start soldering, it makes things a lot easier. And uh, then a uh, little shrink wrap on there uh, to get everything solidified. I like to shrink it down just a little bit and then work that shrink wrap up into the pocket uh, if you've ever soldered these, you'll know what I mean. And then, uh, and then finish it off. And do them one at a time. Don't, uh, don't try and do two at once, because uh, invariably one of them will slip down or, or something. So I, uh, I hit them one at a time, and it uh, gets nice and clean. So now I'm going to put these on the battery pads. Now, one thing I want to talk about is, uh, and I'm not going to really go into much detail in this video, but there, <laughs> there is a question on what the proper direction for these. Uh, for this PCB board to be, which is the front and which is the back. In my opinion, the battery lead should go in the back because the camera's going to go in the front. That's not quite how Taro designed it, but that's how I built it. And so, uh, you know, that's the, the joy of taking liberties with a build is you can do what you want. So the catch here, though, is I'm not using a canopy. If you're using a canopy, you're going to have to do it the way Taro wanted you to do it. So that's a whole other story. And I'll do a different video on that. That's it for this video. Uh, the next video is going to cover getting my uh, throttle endpoints set on the ESCs and testing them and getting motor directions right. So stay tuned.